So now that we've been able to play Season 6 on Warzone for a little bit, and the dust has now settled, I'm questioning what were the biggest changes, and how have they actually impacted the game? We did get told what was coming through the trailers and patch notes, but as always, there were some sneaky additions too that they surprised us with. And as such, I thought I'd let you guys know what these sneaky updates were, along with how the updates that we knew about are faring, with a little bit of opinion thrown in there too. So let's start with the two bigger changes to weapons that we were told about, which were the C4 nerf and the Origin 12 nerf. If you've been on in the past couple of days and are a keen C4 thrower, then I don't need to tell you that this nerf really has massively impacted on its effectiveness. The delay before you explode it is really tricky to get used to, and means you get caught out a lot and often just sent to the gulag whilst you stand there and stare at them with an air of disappointment and dismay. On top of this, the distance and speed at which you throw the pieces of C4 has also massively reduced. They just kind of flop out of your hands like a sedated trout. I mean, the amount of people I've seen blow themselves up with C4 by accident is just kinda sad now. I actually was one of the people who thought the game did need a C4 nerf, I'll be honest. I thought they were too powerful, but this nerf feels a little bit over the top. If you haven't hopped onto Season 6 of Warzone yet, do yourself a favour and run Semtexes. On the flip side, the Origin 12's nerf is hardly noticeable. This was nerfed by reduced damage at extreme close range but its fire rate and high damage anyway still makes it pretty damn good. But thankfully it's much rarer as floor loot now, so you can rest a little bit easier at the beginning of games. Now let's briefly talk about map changes. We knew the metro system was coming to Vdansk, and there have been a few issues with it. There was a day one bug where you could survive in the gas when you were riding the metro, which some people actually won from. Call of Duty quickly fixed it though, so we're now kind of back to normal with it. I mean, I do randomly spawn up in a bunker at the airport when I travel to there, but never mind that. I think it's a pretty good feature actually, and works well, but in the games I've been in, it's been very quiet down there, especially for a new feature on the map, and I think part of the reason for that is that the stations aren't marked on the map, so no one really knows exactly where they are. Additionally, there isn't any mega loot down there worth fighting for. And I know you may think, well it's for transport, why does it even need good loot? And I kind of get that, but since you have to go down some steps, then wait for the train to come, and then for the train to actually take off, it's not exactly speedy. Like, compared to above ground travel, there can't be a lot of time difference on some occasions between stops. So I think a little bit more incentive to head to them would be good, but that's just my opinion. All in all, I do like them a lot. Okay, so that's stuff we knew was coming to Season 6. But honestly, there were some pretty important and game-changing alterations to Warzone that were made that they never even mentioned. Straight off the bat, you can get Juggernauts in normal games now. How insane is that? If you head into bunkers where ultra-rare loot is, you have the chance of getting the Juggernaut killstreak. You just have to call it in and crack it open. I don't know how I feel about this. It's pretty powerful, but I guess does add another dimension to games and can give people a chance of winning who don't usually. Plus, they're not exactly impossible to kill if you have killstreaks on and things like that. I also think it's good to have reasons to actually enter the bunkers. When they first came to the game, it felt exciting to get into them, but I always kind of thought, well I have my loadout, which is the best thing I could need, so why bother even trying to get in them? But stuff like this makes it well worth gaining access to the bunkers now, so you can expect the bunkers to be even busier than normal next time you head over to them. In addition to Juggernaut spawning in the bunkers, there's a brand new killstreak that you can get in them too. This is called Foresight, and actually is incredibly powerful in terms of winning the game. It doesn't actually kill anyone like the Juggernaut suit, but it gives you a peek ahead at all of the circle locations, so it's like maximising recon contracts. Not only can you get to the area where the game will end, you'll also know which side of the circle to be on when the next circle is marked and the gas rotates. Think about all those end games you've been in, where the circle location has screwed you. Well with this, it's not gonna happen. I actually really like the idea of this killstreak, as it doesn't seem too overpowered to me. Like knowing the endgame location is great, but you still have to get there and be smart with your movement, it doesn't guarantee a win. Okay now on to the final change I'm going to talk about, and that's self revive kits being in chests. 
Not a massive change, but a welcome one in my opinion. They are, as you might expect, rare loot items and can appear in normal loot chests, so you don't have to go to bunkers for these. But remember, more rare items in chests means a reduction in other rare loot items in their like gas masks and armor satchels. Apart from that, I can't really think of any negatives associated with these self-revive kits. One piece of advice I would offer though is that you can expect more people to have self-revives on now. So keep an eye out for people self-reviving when you're next in gunfights with other teams. But that's all from me in this video. Did I miss anything new to Season 6 Warzone? And what do you guys think of the new additions to Warzone? Are they overpowered, or are they just a bit of fun? Let me know in the comments below, and if you did enjoy the video please give it a quick like, and if you want to see more Call of Duty videos why not subscribe, or even click join and become a member to get access to exclusive perks. Bye for now.